morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Verena Arne. I welcome you very much at the hub, and I welcome Bosa on stage. Oh, what? wait a minute. Bosa is a professor of theoretical physics at Josef Stefan Institute in Ljubljana. She has contributed numerous great works to fractal noise, uh, network theory, multi-scale systems, and collective <coughs> phenomena. Welcome on stage. Thank you very much. Um, so I decided to, um, to speak about a very specific uh, things uh, as we, can, we can identify as elements of the human social experience. Okay. Uh, so briefly, I would answer this uh, few of these uh, of the Stefan's provocative and guiding questions here uh, to, to say what I think about the future of our works and illustrated with a few examples uh, very briefly from our experience where our recent, uh, our recent work where we can actually show how to find out these building blocks of human social experience. I would say that this um, so research belongs to these three these three groups of the uh, of the interest of the of the hub. So basically, it is uh, fundamental science applied to real data, and uh, these are about social social behavior. So I was saying that. Okay, uh, the first question I want to address is uh, what makes the complexity science unique? Uh, that's what Stefan asks us, and we all think about that, I guess. Um, and my answer is uh, multidisciplinarity. I, I, I mean it in real terms. It means that, for instance, physics needs the input from machine learning and, and psychology or neurology. That's my experience in other, other disciplines as well. Um, we need to study the systems at different scales at the same time. And that's what I want to address here. Um, and this, uh, the device new theories, new mathematics, which will help us to say where the complexity resides, where it lives. Uh, the other question, where do we go here to be recognized as a unique, uh, 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 with our unique approaches? I would, uh, I would say if we, if we base our, um, our uh, investigations on the physics theory of uh, collective phenomena, if we put this in the center with all inputs from other disciplines, uh, this is what something that Peter also, uh, I think, uh, wanted to, to show, has shown. Uh, we have to, that means we study mechanisms, we answer why questions, not just describe the phenomena, and uh, using big data as experimental facts here. Uh, and then uh, uh, make that other, others who do applications in different areas where complexity science matters observe our methods and, and uh, results, which is most difficult, right? So I illustrate this on these uh, uh, three scales where we can um, decipher elements of human uh, social experience. Everything starts in our brains, in brains of participants in social uh, phenomena. So uh, by now, we know a lot about brain. We also physicists, but neurologists know much more. And we know that these networks are quite complex. And also we know by analyzing the data that uh, different brains are, brains are different. Although if you look at the networks at the level of connections, even triangles, they are similar, but each people is different. And where this difference is hiding, hiding it's in high organized structures, which I indicate here by this, uh, by this geometrical figure. So if you do not research brain, brain data, uh, in particular situations, we can find outputs of specific brain activities by analyzing whatever pe person is doing, like what kinds of words we use, what, how we use emotions, how, what we know, and how we use the knowledge. So in the artifacts that people, people do. Next level is brain-to-brain -brain coordination, which we can also study. Uh, re recently, there are such experiments where they, they have EEG recording of people 
during the communication, and we analyze such data. This is a very nice example of two brain structure. Actually, the parts of two brains which communicate speaker-listener brain, which actually uh, is based on what neurologists call social brain. Social brain are different brain areas uh, which uh, act together to, to enable so-called social cogni cognition, which means uh, to, to say what does it mean, I know what is going in your mind. This makes us human. Other, other uh, uh, species do not have, probably do not have these uh, possibilities. Uh, what makes us human is, is even, even uh, could be backfire. For instance, I know that you know that I don't know what, what you know. So this can go to different levels. This is human, right? So we can actually analyze this again as a network. And most... Uh, this is frontal, frontal areas in these brains are connected. So this is particularly nice example of brain-to-brain -brain coordination where we have so-called so super brain structure. This is very rare, I must say. And many other examples are much poorer networks. But still, do those people understand what they're talking about. So it's not necessary to have such a good brain-to-brain -brain coordination, which is a good example of empathy. That's what makes us human. I said that these structures are interesting uh, when we al analyze them as a network. Two brain networks of this sort has much more of these complex structures than sum of two brains, two, two separate brains. That's where complexity of the human coordination is, uh, is living. Next level is uh, social networking, which we know much better. Here, uh, the nodes are, u are users, that means humans as whole. And this is an example, uh, which I, one of numerous examples that we also worked on, uh, which is communication on of Ubuntu chats. Uh, you know, people share experience about Linux. And what happens, actually, they exchange uh, many emotional words even there. All these, these colors are emotions, positive, negative, or neutral. And they keep communicating for years, making some kind of social structure. OK, this is an example where humans communicate together to make some kind of common, common value. If you ask me what's common value here, it's that all these participants solve and now know better Linux which is actually a great contribution to our civilization, right? <laughs> so um, this structure also has a very non-trivial high-order organization. But in this case, it is centered around specific people about what they know and what kind of emotional arousal they sent along the communication links. To, to summarize, in all these three networks, uh, three layers, uh, levels of uh, network analysis, we can, we can find uh, so-called hidden structures, uh, which I indicated all the time with, the, with this tetrahedron. It's just to say that we have to go beyond just links or maybe triangles. There are much more non-trivial high-order structures, which are tetrahedron and high-order clicks. And more importantly, the way they combine together, they share different nodes in order to make such complex structures, which make each network unique. So to, to, to stress that, each brain is unique in terms of the hidden structure, which means even the same brain uh, doing specific things like solving mathematical problem would have different structure than that same brain uh, writing a poem, right? So um, what we have, this, these elements, uh, it's a kind of geometric, geometric vocabulary of the network organization. And uh, they can be found by methods of algebraic topology of graphs. Um, so uh, it's, uh, let's say, uh, when we, when we f analyze networks on dif different le levels, we can find that this 
vocabulary is always there. It's always similar. But the way it's assembled to do something specific is, is a unique. So it's uh, something to say uh, more popular words. If you have, for instance, uh, two poems, poems of the same size, they contain same words, but when you read them, it's a different experience. Okay, thank you. <laughs>